Welcome to Auto Instruct. In today's video, we're going to show you how to change the clutch fluid on your manual vehicle. For that, you'll need brake fluid. Um, we're using Castrol React Performance.4. You'll need a brake bleeding kit, as you can see here, a rag to clean up any spills, gloves to protect your hands, as well as spanners to undo the nipple. The first step is to locate and clean the clutch fluid reservoir. So we found it here, right behind the air intake of the Subaru. So we'll clean this up to get rid of excess gunk around it, because you don't want that going in there once you've opened it. So we'll unscrew that, like so. Now with the remaining fluid that's in there, and we're sitting halfway between min and max, you want to suck it out using some kind of suction device. We're using a suction tool from an auto stall, like so. Now you don't want to suck too much of it out because you don't want to run it dry. But something like that will do. The next step is to locate the bleeder nipple in your engine bay. The easiest way to do this is to follow the line between the reservoir and your clutch. So for us, it runs underneath the air intake and pops out here on top of the transmission. So it's quite convenient in this Subaru, it's just on top of the engine bay right here. So go ahead and attach our one-man bleeder kit and we'll loosen the nipple. So we've gone ahead and attached the one-man bleeder kit to the nipple and we've loosened the nipple slightly and as you can see, fluids come into the line. Um, we've got the one-man bleeder fixed with firewall, which is convenient. Now, with the clutch, you'll need um, two people to do this despite having a one-man bleeder kit. Someone needs to loosen the nipple whilst your friend presses on the clutch. Then when the clutch is against the firewall, you need to tighten the nipple again. As they pull the clutch back off the firewall, it will suck down the fluid from the reservoir instead of pulling it back down through the one-man bleeder kit. Um, the difference is when doing brakes is that you can just keep pressing the brake pedal as there's always more fluid coming down the brake line into the cylinder than that will return. Whereas the clutch seems to return one to one. So the same amount of fluid that comes out will go straight back in as soon as you pull the clutch back up again. So you need to do the two person method. So what I'll do now is I'll loosen the nipple slightly. It's easy getting my hand in here because it's quite a small gap. So I've loosened the nipple. My friend's going to press on the clutch. As I can see the fluid's coming through now. Now once the clutch is against the firewall, as he's just indicated, I'll tighten up the nipple again. It's a very hard process in this Subaru, as there's not a lot of space. So I'll just do it by hand slightly, nip it up. Now he's going to pull the clutch off the firewall using his foot, um, as the clutch won't really return to the same position. So he's pulling it up, and as he's doing that, I'm watching the, the, brake, the clutch fluid cylinder. Um, and the level goes down as he pulls it off the firewall. Um, it's still at a comfortable level above the maximum line. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen the nipple again. Like so. Now he's going to press the clutch again. Yep. The clutch is now against the firewall and there's still a little bit of movement coming through the line. So I'm going to tighten up the nipple again. Now you need to repeat this process a few times until you start seeing clear fluid in the line. After repeating that process a few times, we've now got clear fluid in the line here to the bleeder kit. So now that I've tightened up the nipple to complete the job, so a couple of, a couple of light tugs, it doesn't need to be that tight at all. And then go ahead and disconnect the bleeder kit. So as we're doing that process, we will keep an eye on the uh, clutch cylinder reservoir here. And we've just hit the minimum mark now. Um, but now that the job's completed, we're gonna to top this up to the full mark. And apologies for blocking your view, but this is a very weird angle. Like so. So just above the max mark, that's not really an issue. Then go ahead and reinsert the cap. And that concludes today's video on how to flush your clutch fluid. Um, the next step is to go for a test drive to ensure that the clutch is operating correctly, which it should do anyway if there's no air in the line. After a week, you might want to double check the clutch fluid reservoir just to make sure that the level hasn't changed at all. 
For more guides, head over to autoinstruct.com.au and please subscribe to our YouTube channel.